you can draw this in Procreate. During this easy Procreate tutorial, I am going to guide you through every single step of creating this study room in Procreate. You don't need any experience with drawing or with Procreate at all. And once you have reached the end of this tutorial, you will feel so proud that you will just have to share your results. And if you are sharing it on social media, if you're sharing it on Instagram, then don't forget to tag me in the image, not just in the description, because that way I will be able to find your work and perhaps we'll see it in the next video. Like these amazing results from my friends at Patreon. Patreon is the place to be if you want to get your Procreate skills to the next level because there I have more than 100 Procreate tutorials ranging from beginner levels to more advanced levels. During this Procreate tutorial we are going to use free brushes only, brushes that are already in the Procreate app. But if you want to get even more free brushes for Procreate then be sure to go to freefromflow.com because there you can find a whole lot of my brushes for free plus an ebook about color theory. So be sure to check that out. But now first, let's get started with this tutorial. I have a canvas that is 2300 pixels by 3000 pixels and I have the color profile set to sRGB. I have created a color palette for you which I have linked in the description in case you want to use the same colors as I'm using. Let's grab our pen or our finger and grab the first color that we will be using for this tutorial. It's the first color in the first row of the color palette. It's a nice dark purple which we will use for our line work. And to create our line work we are going to use a drawing guide. To turn on a drawing guide you need to go to the wrench here in the upper left, then to canvas and then turn on drawing guide over here. Then go to edit drawing guide and over here you can adjust your drawing guide a little bit. Just make sure that you keep the grid size at 95 pixels but you can adjust the thickness of the lines if you like. You can make them more opaque if you are afraid you might not be able to see them and you could also change the color of your lines here at the top. I'm going to stick with these settings and I'm going to turn on assisted drawing over here. Once you have that turned on, you will only be able to make horizontal and vertical lines. Let's tap done. Now for our brush, we are going to use a brush that you can find under inking and that's the dry ink brush. I have the opacity of this brush set to 100% and the size is set to 25%. And now we are going to start by drawing our window. First, let's count. We'll start over here and count seven blocks from the left side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And three from the top. So add a little dot over here and we'll do the same on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Over there. And then we'll make a horizontal line. I'm using very little pressure because the harder you press with your pen, the thicker your stroke will become. Now, if you tend to press really hard, then just make your brush a little bit smaller. Now we will go down 13 blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 over here. Make a vertical line. And then we'll do the same on this side. And then we'll connect these two areas. Now we'll go down three blocks here and then three blocks to the side for our desk. Like this. So here it's sticking out three blocks as well. And then we will go down until we are here. Three blocks above the bottom. So make a vertical line here and another one over here. And we'll go to the side one block and then we will go up to halfway this block over here. So that's three and a half from the top like this. We'll do the same over here to the side and then up and then we'll connect these two areas. And we'll also go up here to a little bit above that line then to this side and then down again. And for our window, we'll go back there, 
go down five blocks from the top. One, two, three, four, five. Make a horizontal line here. And now for the little windows inside, first go halfway in this block, then to this center point. Go down like this, then to the side, and then up again. Now let's go to the center and go a little bit to the left of the center line. Go all the way down and then a little bit to the right from the center line. And then we'll make a horizontal line over here and over here. Then we'll go a little bit lower and make another horizontal line. Then we'll go down to this line. That's two and a half lines down. Make another horizontal line. And then we'll go a little bit lower again in the middle of that block. Like this. Now, of course, we don't want these lines over here. So let's remove them. We'll do that with the eraser, but we want the eraser to be like the brush, the pen we are using right now. So if you tap and hold the eraser, you can see that the eraser has switched to the dry ink brush. And the reason you want that is if, for instance, the eraser will be a soft brush and you would go on erase here, then the edges would look weird. You want those edges to have that same texture. So let's just go over here and erase these parts. You might need to make your brush a little bit smaller. For instance, 7%. You don't want to erase too much. You can go along this edge. Even make your lines a little bit thinner this way. Then over here. You're going to tidy everything up. Then we have this one over here. Then we need vertical strokes. And now when we zoom out, you can see our, our window is nice and clean. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Let's continue. Let's grab our brush again. And over here, we are going to make a nice little painting. And you know what? I feel like pressing a little bit harder on my pen. So I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's go for 8%. That way I don't have to be so careful. Let's go over here, two blocks to the side and one up. And then we'll go down here. Then we'll go four to the side, back up, and then close our shape. Then we'll go down here, one block down, and then we'll go four blocks, then to the side for another little poster. Then back to our desk. Let's find the center line of our desk over here. And then we'll go three to the side here and three to the side here. That is where our drawer will be. Let's start on this line like this. Then we'll go up to just underneath that top line and then close the shape. Then we'll make another drawer on the right and one on the left will start at the same height, but in the middle of that block. Then we'll go to the right, to the middle of this block, then back down and then a line over here. And then we'll do the same on this side. Make a line down and to the left to halfway of that block and close our rectangle like this. Then for our iPad stand over here, let's find the middle line again and we'll go two and a half to the left and two and a half to the right. So we'll start here and two and a half to the right, build like this. And now I need a diagonal line and we can't make that as long as that drawing assist is turned on. So let's go to the layer menu and over here on our layer, you can see that it's assisted. And that means that we can only make those vertical and horizontal lines. So let's turn that off by tapping the layer and then tap drawing assist. Now we can go over here and make a line to this middle of this block. 
hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape and then make a line like this we'll do the same on this side hold your pen in place put it in the middle of this block and then once you have that you can turn drawing assist back on so tap the layer and tap drawing assist i'll make another line a little bit shorter than the one on top like this and over here as well that's where our ipad will be then we need to turn off drawing assist again so go to the layer tap the layer and tap drawing assist and then we'll make two more diagonal lines Now we are going to make a rug on the floor. Let's move our canvas up a little bit. And the top of the rug will be right here. Four blocks from the bottom in the center over here. And we are going to make a bit of a semicircle, and the top will be here. And we'll start here, one block on the left of that desk and one block to the right for this side of the desk. Start here, make an oval shape all the way to over here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just hold your pen in place, make it snap to the quick shape, and then use edit shape here at the top. I can use these handles to adjust your little rug a little bit. So you'll get something like this. And then just tap the brush to get out of that menu. Now let's go back. And let's make two bookshelves. First, make sure that you turn on drawing assist again so we can only make horizontal and vertical lines. So tap the layer and then tap drawing assist. And turn off the layer menu. And then over here, we'll go one block up from the bottom of this curtain and then two to the right. And we'll make a shelf over here, one block high. Then we'll go over here, we'll follow this line and we'll start here this time. I make another shelf a little bit lower. Next, we are going to make a new layer underneath this one. We'll tap the plus and then we'll drag this one underneath layer one. On this layer, we are going to make the line where the wall meets the floor. We want the line to be perfectly horizontal, so let's turn on drawing assist for this layer as well. So tap it and then tap drawing assist. And then we'll start six blocks from the bottom so one two three four five six over here make a horizontal line and you don't have to worry about going through our desk now one more thing that i forgot on the previous layer on layer one let's go back to layer one tap that let's add a little something to this frame over here start over here then go down try to keep a little bit of the same distance around. And now our painting has a nice little frame. Now let's move on to our next layer on which we are going to draw more elements for our room. Let's make a new layer on top of this one. Let's tap the plus. And first, let's add some books on our shelf. To do that, we want vertical and horizontal lines. So let's tap the layer and turn on drawing assist again. And we'll go to these shelves. Let's start over here for a book. And you can vary the thicknesses of these books a little bit, the height. Just make a couple of books. And make sure to add a little horizontal line to the underside so that these shapes are closed. Then we'll make some more books over here. bit higher just vary it a little bit and again make sure that you also make a horizontal line just underneath the books now let's add some other elements to do that we need to turn off drawing assist on the layer so tap the layer and then tap drawing assist and then let's go back First, let's add a little pot here, a pot with a plant. 
we'll make a little curved line over here and one over here and then a thicker part at the top make sure that you close the underside and then let's add some leaves just some shapes like this pointy shapes and one bigger one over here I want another plant over here let's start two blocks from the wall and make a big pot here then we'll go down make it a little bit thinner at the bottom a shape like this then we'll add a little foot over here long and thin and one over here as well and of course we don't need these little lines so let's grab the eraser and get rid of that and over here then back to the brush and then let's add some leaves here We'll make rounded leaves here. Make these rounded shapes. Some a little bit bigger, some smaller. One over here. Here and one here on the side. I can just grab the eraser if you need to clean some areas up a little bit. Like this. And then let's add some, some veins to these leaves. So make sure to grab the brush and let's add a few little details. Some of these lines for this one and this one and this one. Now let's make a little lamp on our table. We'll start here in the middle of this block and we'll move to this area we'll go up just above that one block and then down again for a rounded shape i will add a little button this doesn't look like a lamp yet but hold on now we'll make a semicircle over here like this hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape you can use edit shape if you need to adjust it a little bit Make a shape like this and tap the brush again and then make an oval shape over here. Again, hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape. If you have to, you can use edit shape to move it around or adjust it and then tap the brush again. Now we'll connect this to the stand like this. And you can hold your pen in place again to make it nice and smooth. Now for another plant, I want to make a semicircle over here pretty big hold your pen in place use edit shape if you have to to adjust it a little bit then grab the brush again and make a horizontal line here at the top and then we'll connect this to the top like this we'll make these diagonal lines hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick line and another one here in the center so now we have this hanging basket. Then over here for our little poster, I want to add these tapes, these like washi tapes. We'll start here and make a diagonal line like this and then make a little tape. We'll do the same at the bottom, diagonal line like this and then turn it into a little tape. On this layer, we can also add a little note to this poster or maybe it's it's like a note you can add a little heart for instance and some text just mimic some text and let's add some sticky notes to the wall first make a short horizontal line and then two curved lines like this and then connect those two curved lines we'll do that again horizontal line 
two curved lines and then connect those two curved lines. Make another one over here, curve, curve, connect. Then another one here, horizontal line, curve, curve, connect. Now let's move to the lower right area. This is where we are going to add a little backpack. First, let's start close to the carpet and make a rounded shape like this. And then another rounded shape here at the bottom. Then we'll start over here and make another rounded shape. That's where the zipper is. And then we'll create this handle here at the top by making two semicircles. Then we have this part in the front of our backpack. A little bit of a rounded rectangle and it also has a zipper over here. We can add a little thingy here for our zipper. Now we'll move on to our drawers. Let's make a little circle for these smaller drawers. You can hold your pen in place to make a perfect circle and tap your finger on the screen to make it perfectly round. Let's do the same over here. Try to make them the same size and then we'll make a handle over here, two blocks wide, like this. Now we're almost there, we just need a place to sit. Now to create that we are going to use the symmetry tool. So we need to go back to the drawing guide, so go to the wrench, then to canvas, then to edit drawing guide. And instead of the 2D grid, we are going to use symmetry now. So just tap that and then tap done. Now, whatever we draw on the left side will also show up on the right side. Let's start over here and go to the center. And you can see it's a little bit less wide than our drawer. Then we'll move down a little bit below where the wall meets the floor and then we'll connect the lower side. Of course, our little stool can float, so let's make a diagonal line like this towards our rug. Then we'll go a little bit to the right here and make another line. And then connect these two here with a little rounded shape. Then go a little bit to the right, make another diagonal line, and then a little rounded shape here at the bottom. Now let's zoom out, let's check if we have everything. I just need another layer with lines for some final details. Let's make a new layer by tapping the plus. And then let's make a little line for some lights that we can hang up later. Let's start about here, go up, then another semicircle over here towards that place where the hanging basket is attached. And then finally, we'll go from this side to the right, like this. Now I also want to add a few little details to the books. I want those to be these horizontal lines, so let's turn on Drawing Assist here. But we do need to turn off Symmetry first, so let's go to the wrench, then to Edit Drawing Guide, and then turn on the 2D Grid again, and then tap Done. And go to the layer, Tap it and turn on Drawing Assist. Now let's make a few of these lines on these books to add a little bit of interest. So you can give some two lines and some can get three. Keeping it very simple. Let's give these some lines. And for some books you can put them at the bottom and for some at the top. So something like this. Now finally, I want to add a plant to our hanging basket, but we don't need drawing assist anymore. So go to the layer menu, tap the layer and turn off drawing assist. You know, actually we don't need the grid at all anymore. So let's go to the wrench, then to canvas and turn off the drawing guide and then tap the wrench again. Now we'll just draw some of these oval shapes close together, some a little bit bigger, some smaller. To create 
a plant-like effect. It's hanging out of this basket in front of the window. So make a nice variety of leaves hanging out of this basket. And it doesn't matter that they look like they are floating. This is a stylized illustration. I think something like this looks nice. Now let's just place a little stylized illustration inside of this frame. We're just going to make some wobbly lines, one over here, a little wobble like this, and a wobble over here, and then some dots. It's like a very stylized illustration. And now we have all of our line work. It's time to add color to our illustration. Let's start with our background. Let's go and make a new layer by tapping the plus and place it underneath the other layers. Now here on layer two, we have this horizontal line that is the place where the wall meets the floor. We are going to tap that layer and turn on reference. And you're going to see what happens when you turn on reference on a layer. Let's go to layer five. We'll grab a color. We will grab this color to be exact, the second color in the first row, and we will drag it onto our screen. And you can see that the paint will go only to that horizontal line there because it's using that line on layer two as a reference. Next, we are going to make another layer for our floor. Let's tap the plus and this time we'll grab a different color. We'll grab this one, fourth color in the first row and we'll drag it onto the floor. Now let's move on and fill the shapes of our big pieces in our room. They are on layer one. That's where the line art is. Now let's turn on reference for this layer. Tap the layer and tap reference. And you can see that reference is no longer turned on for layer two. It now is for layer one. Now we are going to make a new layer on top of layer two. So let's tap the plus. And now for our color. Let's first grab this one over here. First color in the second row. And we'll drag that onto the rug. Hold your pen in place and then here at the top, when you slide to the right, you can adjust the color drop threshold. Now make sure that you go all the way to the right until it spills out and then go a little bit back to the left. Now you are certain that it is entirely filled. Now on to the next color. Let's go to the color palette, grab this one over here, fifth color in the second row. And we are going to use that for our desk. Drag in the color these areas and for these drawers we are going to use a different color we are going to grab the next one sixth color in the second row drag it into the drawers like this then we'll move on to our ipad stand we will use this color for that that's the seven color in the second row let's drag it in and i can see that it's filling the entire thing so let's slide to the left to make sure that the inside will stay clear. I want a dark color over there, so let's grab one. Let's first grab this dark purple and then slide a little bit to this side so that we get a purplish dark color and then drag it into our screen. Now we'll go back to this color over here, seven color in the second row. The reason we had to pick the color, by the way, for our iPad is that our color palette, it's already entirely full. We are using so many colors that there was no space for an iPad color anymore. Now let's drag this color into the bookshelves like this. Then let's move on to our window. Let's grab this color over here. It's the ninth color in the first row. Let's drag it in. And then for our curtain, we are going to grab this color, the sixth color in the first row, drag it onto that area. And what we have left is the artwork over here and our little poster. Let's fill this poster with this pink as well. And then for this one, let's grab this color over here, sixth color in the second row. Let's drag that into this area 
and then let's grab this color fifth color in the second row we'll drag that on the inside and now let's make a little artwork over here for our brush let's go and grab the monoline brush under calligraphy and for the first color let's grab this one first color in the third row and we are just going to draw something here for this stylized art piece the brush opacity is set to 100 percent and the size is at 20 percent and let's make a little hill shape over here you're going to color it in by hand and of course you can hang any type of artwork here you can also make your own thing or perhaps you can hang up a previous you can draw the tutorial that you have created now for the next color we'll grab this one sixth color in the second row make another little hill here fill it in by hand then let's grab a pink sixth color in the first row for another little hill here color it in then let's grab this one over here seven color in the second row for another big hill last one let's color it in there now we have filled in all the big pieces and we need to move on to the next layer first tab layer one then tap the plus for a new layer and then make sure you turn on reference for layer three that's the layer on which we have the plants and the bag and the lamp so let's tap it and turn on reference then go back to layer eight and now it's time to fill all those things Let's start with this hanging basket. Let's grab this color over here. That's the ninth color in the second row. And let's drag it in. Now let's go to our plant. For our pot, we'll use this color, sixth color and the third row. Let's drag it in. And then for the leaves, we are going to use which one was it again? So let's go for the ninth color in the third row. Let's drag it in. Filling all of these leaves. And then move on to the lamp. For the lamp, we have this color over here, the seventh color in the third row. Let's drag it in. And oops, I can see that we have forgotten to close this shape over here. No problem. Let's just undo this. Tap with two fingers and we need to go back to layer three. Then we need to grab the color that we used for our lines, the first color in the first row. Then we need to grab the brush again, the inking brush, dry ink. And then we need to close the shape here at the bottom. And while we are at it, let's also make this a little bit thicker. We do need to turn off assisted drawing though. So let's tap the layer, turn off drawing assist, go back to the brush and make this a little bit thicker. I like that. And now we are ready to fill it. So let's go back to layer eight. Let's grab the color that we wanted to use. That's the seven color in the third row and let's drag it in. That's better. Now for the lamp area over here. And then for the inside, let's grab a darker color. Let's grab this one over here. That's the eight color in the first row. And let's drag it in. Oh, and for our little button, of course, let's grab this color, ninth color in the first row. Drag it in. Then for this plant, First, let's grab the first color in the third row for the stand. Let's drag it in. Then we'll move on to the next color, the second color in the third row. Use that for the pot. And then for the leaves, we'll start with this color over here, fourth color in the third row for these leaves in front. 
Now we'll move on to the previous color, third color in the third row. We'll use that for these leaves. If you can see some, some areas that are, aren't colored here, then you can just go over with that monoline brush and color that in a little bit. Now let's move on to the fifth color and use that for these leaves in the back. Then for the handles of our desk, we are going to use this color over here. The ninth color in the first row, let's drag it in. You might need to adjust the color drop threshold. Then for the circles, there. Now move on to the stool. For the stool, we have this color, third color in the second row. We'll put that in these feet or legs. Not sure what they are called. And then for the top part, we'll use this color, fourth color in the second row, drag it in. And then let's move on to the backpack. I want that to be purple as well. Let's just use this color, drag it in. Perhaps you need to adjust the color drop threshold. Then for the handle. And for the front side, I want to use a nice green. Let's grab this one. That's the ninth color in the third row. Drag it in. And then let's see what we need to color are the post-its, the tapes over here and the books. Let's start with this area. First, let's grab this color over here, eight color in the third row for these little tapes. Again, we need to adjust the color drop threshold. In my case, that is. Let's also use this color for this post-it. Then let's switch to this color, fourth color in the first row. Drag it in. Then for a nice pink color, the seventh color in the third row for this one. And finally, let's make a yellow one. Let's grab this one, this color. That's the seventh color in the second row. Drag it in for that post-it. Then finally, the books. You can just fill these with some random colors. I'll grab the seventh color from the third row. Drag it into a couple of books. Then I'll move on to this third color in the third row, that green. For some green books. Let's also grab this reddish color, second color in the third row. Then perhaps a brown one, third color in the second row. And maybe some pink books. Let's grab the sixth color in the first row. We'll fill these. There. Now we have done quite a lot. What we do need to color fill is the inside of the windows. We are going to do that on a separate layer. First, let's make sure that we turn layer one into the reference layer. So tap it, then tap reference, and then make a layer underneath layer seven. So first let's tap layer two and tap the plus. And then for our color, we are going to grab this one over here. That's the seven color in the first row. Let's drag it into the windows. And right now I'm realizing that there's one more thing that we can actually fill. And that's these little leaves. Let's go back to layer eight and then make a new little layer by tapping the plus just for our leaves because we want those leaves to be separate from our little hanging basket. And for the color, we are going to grab this one over here, 10th color and the second row. And since these shapes are very small, it's not very handy to drag and drop the color. So let's just use well, we can use a dry ink or we can use the monoline brush under calligraphy and we can just color these in by hand. I 
and right now I'm realizing that of course this color needs to be on top of the lines of the basket. So let's drag it on top here and let's continue coloring them. And then once we have this, we have colored everything in our illustration and then we'll continue adding more interest by adding some patterns and some light and shadow, really adding that extra to our illustration. All right, time to move on. Let's get started with our wall. We'll just move from the back to the front. Let's go to our wall layer. That's layer five. Now on this layer, we are going to create a gradient. Let's go to the brushes and then to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. And for our color, we are going to grab the third color in the first row. Now the opacity of this brush is at 60% and we'll set the size to 25%. And we'll add this dark color to the top to about halfway our window. Make another pass at the top, make that nice and dark. And now that we have this, we want to blur it to make a nice gradient. But first we need to go to the layer menu, tap the layer and turn on alpha lock. Otherwise this bottom area will get blurred too. And then you will get a light blurred edge. We want that edge here to be crisp. Look, if we turn off that floor layer, you can see that it's white over here. And if we would blur this without alpha lock, you would see, or you would start seeing that white. Well, let's turn this back on. Alpha lock is turned on for this layer. And now let's go to the magic wand, then to Gaussian blur and slide your pen or your finger to the right on the screen. And let's set it to 40%. Next, we are going to add a little pattern to the wall as if there is some wallpaper. Let's make a new layer by going to the layer menu, tap the plus, then change the layer blending mode of this layer, tap the N and then scroll down to overlay. And we'll go to the vintage brushes. We will create a vintage wallpaper by using the fever brush. Now for the color of this brush, we are going to use this color over here. That's the sixth color in the third row. And the opacity of this brush is set to 73% and we are going to turn the size up to 100%. And now we are going to gently glaze over the wall without lifting our pen. Using very light pressure. And since we are using the overlay blending mode, this color will affect the top part differently than the bottom part. So over here, it's not pink, but it's a nice dark purplish color. Now next, let's move on to layer six, which is our floor layer. Let's turn on alpha lock on this layer. So we will only be able to paint on the floor. And for our brush, we are going back to the soft brush under airbrushing. And for the color, we are going to use this fifth color in the first row. Now the opacity of this brush is still at 60% and the size is at 25%. And we are going to go over the top area, making that a little bit darker. And if you want to soften it a little bit, then again, you can go to the magic wand and do Gaussian blur and then slide to the right to let's say 20% and then tap the magic wand again. I also want a little pattern on our rug. Let's make a new layer for that on top of layer seven. Let's tap the plus. And now for our brush, we are going to go to the textures brushes. Where are they? Over here. And we are going to use the Victorian brush. Now for the color, we will use this second color in the second row. And the opacity of this brush is at 100% and the size is at 25%. And now we are just going to go over our canvas without lifting our pen. Otherwise you will break the pattern. Just make something like this. So you get some nice pattern over here. And next we are going to go to the layer menu and we are going to 
turn on clipping mask, tap the layer, then turn on clipping mask. And now this pattern is only showing up on our layer with colors. Now go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow over here and set it to distort. We're going to use these handles at the top to put it in perspective. Let's zoom out a little bit. Put this pattern in perspective. We can pull out these a little bit so that the pattern further away is a little bit smaller and it's bigger as it is closer to the viewer. Now, of course, we have a little bit of pattern over here on our desk. We don't want that. Let's just use the eraser over here and go over that area to get rid of that. Next, let's move on to our window. Go to the layer menu, go to layer nine. Again, turn on alpha lock because we don't want to paint outside of the shape. So tap the layer, turn on alpha lock. And for the brush, let's go back to the soft brush under airbrushing. And for the color, we will use this one over here, the eight color in the first row. And we are going to go over this top area adding a nice gradient. Again, you can make it softer by going to the magic wand and to Gaussian blur and then slide to the right to let's say 25%. I also want some stars in our night sky. So let's go to the brushes, tap the brushes, then go to luminance and use the light pen. For our color, we are going to use this ninth color in the first row. Now let's turn up the opacity of this brush to 100% and let's set the size to 28%. We'll zoom in a little bit and we are going to add some random stars. If you press harder, your star will become brighter. And if you press lightly, you will get a small star. And focus on the top area because that's where it's darkest and that's where the stars will shine brightest or at least that's where they will be more visible. All right, so something like this. And now that we have all our patterns and our gradients, we are going to start adding shadows and highlights. Let's go to our layer menu. Let's start with our wall and our floor. So let's tap layer six and tap the plus for a new layer. And we are going to set the layer blending mode of this layer to multiply. You can tap the N and then scroll up to multiply. And multiply is great to add shadows. It won't affect any textures or patterns like our wallpaper pattern. It'll just make everything darker. We are going to lower the opacity a little bit. We will slide our slider to 50%. And then for our color, we are going to grab this last color in the first row. And then for our brush, let's go to the illustration brushes. No, not the illustration, calligraphy brushes and use the monoline brush. Let's set the opacity of the brush to 100% and the size to 25. And let's, for instance, add a little shadow to our backpack here. Now, in case you want to be able to drag in the color right now, you do need to make sure that there are no reference layers. So let's go to layer one, tap it and turn off reference. So we won't be bothered by that. Now let's go back to layer 13, drag in the color like this. And there we have our shadow. Let's also make a shadow underneath our pot here. Let's drag in the color again. And then let's also make a shadow on the wall here behind the desk. I want it to be a little bit soft, soft edged. So I'll want to use the airbrushing soft brush, but I do want that shadow to be confined within our, our desk. So let's make a selection. We'll go to the S shape ribbon, use the freehand selection. And then we are going to tap over here, then over here. Now you'll see a nice straight selection line. We actually need to go all the way over here. Then we'll go to the top. Then we'll move to this side, tap here. 
then tap in this corner and then all the way to the right here. And we'll loop around and close our selection by tapping that little circle. Now when we have an active selection, we are only able to paint inside of that selection. So let's go back to our soft brush and let's paint with our purple on this area. Adding a shadow here and on the sides here like this. Then tap the S shape ribbon again to turn off your selection. Now let's continue. Let's make a layer on top of these layers. On top of layer 12, let's tap the plus for a new layer. Let's make sure that we turn on clipping mask. So the shadows we are going to create will only show up on these shapes. Now let's set the layer blending mode to multiply again. So scroll up here and lower the opacity to 50% again. We'll stick with the purple color. And for our brush, let's go back to the monoline brush. Now let's start with our desk. Let's make a little line underneath here and underneath our drawers. You can hold your pen in place to make these nice straight lines. So every time you make a line, hold your pen in place to make it snap to that quick shape. Okay, what else do we have? We have the curtain up here, the window. Let's add a line here for a little shadow and over here, just underneath the curtain. Then we have the bookshelves. Let's add a little shadow on the left side with, with a slight curve like this. Because our light sources, we have a light source here and this, this will also be a light source. So it's shining on that part of the, of the shelf. Then we have our poster here. Let's add a little bit of shadow next to, next to the stickers or the tape. And let's also add a little shadow on the right side here and the underside. It just gives a little bit more depth to our illustration. Let's also add a little shadow underneath our stool. Let's drop in the color. And you can see that since we are using multiply, it just darkens the layer and you can still see that pattern on the rug. I also want a soft shadow on our, on our desk. And to do that, we won't be using the monoline brush because that has a crisp edge. We want a soft edged brush like the soft brush under airbrushing. But we don't want that soft brush, that paint to show up on our rug. So we are going to use the selection tool again. Let's go to the S shape ribbon. And with the freehand tool, we can just make a selection of our desk just to make sure, just make sure that you don't go over the rug. Then grab the brush and just add a little bit of shadow to the underside. All right, now let's move on. Let's tap the S shape ribbon and let's go and fix this a little bit. I can see that I went over this area. Let's grab the eraser and remove that. Need to stay sharp. All right, let's move on to the next layer on which we can add some shadow. And that's the layer with all the objects, of course, with the light and the plants. Let's go to layer eight, tap the plus for a new layer. We'll set this to clipping mask as well so that our shadow will only show up on the objects. Tap clipping mask, then tap the N and set this layer to multiply as well. And also lower the opacity to 50%. Then grab your brush and let's go. Let's start with this plant, for instance. First, make sure to grab the model line brush again under calligraphy and our light source is coming from this direction. So our shadow will be on this side. Let's make a shadow like this. And let's also make a little shadow on the right sides of these leaves. So 
So on every leaf on the right side, a little shadow. Now let's move to our backpack. Let's add a little shadow just under here. And underneath our backpack over here. And on that underside. Like this. Then for our stool, we want a little shadow here on the underside. And also some shadow on these, these legs of our stool. And there'll be more shadow on the one in the back because that top part is casting that shadow on the inside of those legs. Now let's move on to this plant. Here we'll have the shadow on the left side because that light source is over here. And some shadow on these legs. And we can also add some shadow on these, on these leaves, just a few and place them on the left sides. Then the lamp here, left side shadow and a little shadow over here. What else do we have? We have the little basket. Let's take a little shadow here. Underneath these little leaves. Now what else do we have? We have our books. We can add some shadows on the left sides. Just to add a little bit more depth there. Did I miss something here? Well, of course we need a little shadow just underneath these post-its. Let's go back to the layer menu and go to this layer again. We forgot to add those shadows. We need to be on this layer because it's on top of our wall and our floor. So we can use this layer to add a little shadow just underneath these post-its like this. It's casting a little shadow on the wall. And if you go a little bit too far, then you can just grab the eraser and clean it up. Then go back to the brush and let's also add a little shadow just underneath this poster. And then I think we have all the shadows. Now that we have all the shadows, we are going to move on to the highlights. First, we'll start with the big furniture again. So first go to layer seven. We have two layers attached to it already. We'll make a new one by tapping the plus and then we'll tap the new layer and set it to clipping mask again. This time we'll set the layer blending mode to color dodge. This is a great layer blending mode for some dramatic lighting. For our color, we are going to grab this one over here, 10th color in the third row. We will stick to our monoline brush. And this time we are going to make lines in the areas where the light will be hitting. So that's the top part of the desk. Hold your pen in place for the quick shape. And we'll also add it to the top part of these drawers just like this and to the top part of our iPad stand and then let's move up and also add a little bit of light to our curtain here and to the top parts of these well, the window I'm not sure if you will be able to see it properly on video. It's very subtle, but it gives an extra touch here. Then we have the bookshelves on this layer. Let's add a little bit of light to the top here and the right side where it gets lit 
by those lamps that we will create later here. And over here as well. Then we have our poster. Let's add a little bit of light to the left side here as well. Perhaps a little bit here at the top. For some nice depth. Then we'll do the same for the next layer. That's layer 8, of course, with all the objects. We'll make a layer on top of layer 15 here. Tap the plus. Then make sure you set it to clipping mask and set the layer blending mode to color dodge. And now let's start with our plant again. Let's add a little light on the left side, left and top side, because the lamp is here and at the top. And let's also add a little light on the left sides of the leaves. So the opposite sides from the shadows. Move on to the backpack. Top part is getting lit. And over here, this area as well. Use the eraser if you need to fix anything. Then back to the brush and we'll add a little light at the top of our stool. Then move on to this plant. Now the light is coming from this side, so we are adding the light on the right side. The light is coming from the right, so the highlights will be on the right sides of the objects. A little bit of light here on each of these leaves. bit here. Then for our lamp, it's also getting lit by itself. And let's also add a little bit of light here. It's getting lit from the top. Then for the books, getting lit on the right side. Just a few highlights. Then for our basket, add a little bit of light on the underside, very subtle. And our post-its can have a little light on the left side because that's where our light source is. And our little tapes here as well. And let's actually also go back and add a little bit of light on our iPad here. Let's go back to layer 16 here, which is attached to the major furniture. And for a color, let's grab this purple. Last color in the first row. And then let's grab the inking brush, the dry ink. And then let's just make of these lines as if you have that little reflection on the iPad. Now we are almost there. Now we are going to add the lights to our scene. And this is going to be so much fun. Let's make a layer on top of all the others. So go to layer 4 here, then tap the plus. And we are going to use the model line brush under calligraphy. And for our color, we are going to use this color over here the eight color in the second row. And before we make our lights, we need to make an adjustment to the monoline brush. You can tap the monoline brush to open the brush studio. And I want to be able to make our monoline brush a little bit bigger. If you go to properties, you can see maximum size here. Now it is set to 23%. If you are using the standard settings for the model line brush, and we are going to turn it up to 40%. Then tap done. And then turn up the size of your brush to 100%. And also make sure that the opacity is at 100% as well, of course. And now we are going to add lights to our line here. Let's start here. 
And let's just add a bunch of lights to this cord. Try to keep the space between the lights an equal distance. And then we'll switch color. We'll grab the next color, the lighter one, the ninth color in the second row. And we'll use that for this light. Let's just tap here. And now we are going to turn our lights on. We'll do that by going to the magic wand and then use the bloom feature. Tap bloom and then slide your pen to the right on your screen until these lights turn on. Let's set it to, let's say 27%. Then let's grab the eraser and check what brush it is set to. It's set to the monoline brush right now, which is great because we need to erase a part of this light here. Let's go over and erase it until you see that line work again. And there it is, your study room illustration. It was a long process, so you should definitely be proud of yourself if you have reached the end. Just don't forget to share your work and leave a little comment if you have enjoyed this tutorial. Or even better, hit that thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. You will be of great help to this channel. Uh, now that you have reached the end of this tutorial, why not turn it into a streak and go and do another tutorial like this one for instance. I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.